it'll be the same thing for this class uh, as a bonus in addition to the webinar. So go below, get signed up. Okay, hey, let's do this. So what is a pickup? A pickup, and first of all, let me just double check. I want to make sure that everything, since I'm doing a little bit of a different setup here this morning, I want to make sure that everything is streaming okay. Yeah, okay, good. I see you guys in the uh, live stream. Just wanted to check to make sure. All right, so what is a pickup, first of all? A pickup in voiceover is where perhaps, uh, it could be a couple of things. Perhaps a recording that you've done, uh, the client has come back with a, a script change, a slight change. Maybe they've changed a word here or there, or a sentence has changed, or a paragraph has changed. It's not a complete reread. It's just where a little bit needs to be changed. So you don't need to record the whole thing. You just need to record the change. Or perhaps you made a mistake or two in your original recording. It happens. And you need to go back and make those corrections. So uh, the recording is a pickup. So we're going to record the new or corrected part, and we're going to edit it into the original recording. Now, here's the trick. We need to do it where nobody can tell the difference. It needs to sound virtually identical to the original recording. Now, here's the thing. You know, in all reality, it... I've listened to, I've, for instance, I've listened to enough audiobooks, enough good audiobooks. I mean, big publishers, you know, the Simon & Schuster's, Penguins, the, the bigger books, uh, in which I know the talent was paid very well, high-level talent, in which I can tell when pickups were recorded. So when you've developed a good ear, you know, sometimes you can tell these things. So when I say it needs to perfectly match up, it needs to be reasonably close. It needs to be where most people would not be able to notice it. But you as a voice talent who does this day in and day out, if you spend en you know, enough hours, hundreds or thousands of hours editing audio, you can pick up on the subtleties. But I want to show you how to go through the process so virtually no one will be able to tell the difference. So what you have in front of you right here, what I have in front of me is a project. And by the way, you will need headphones for this. So this is a project for Infineon, um, the company Infineon, that I recorded yesterday. Okay, so, and this is the script for that project. So let's pretend that this comes back to me and it needs a pickup. And no, this is actually, that's not the recording. I'm sorry, that's not the script. This is the script. All right, so let's imagine, let's find a line in here. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, let's imagine, let's go down here. I want to find something that's like in the middle of it so that I want, I want the biggest challenge possible. So this, this sentence right here, let's imagine in the second half of that sentence, um, we want to, let's say the change is, obviously this is about fighting against global warming, electric cars, but let's say that this, for some reason, needed to be changed to, to gas-powered cars. Obviously, that's not the case here, but I'm just saying for the sake of our project. So it needs to go from we'll drive electric cars to we'll drive gas-powered cars, and we'll make data centers more efficient. So again, the, the change could be anything, but let's just imagine it's that. It's a few words right in the middle of the sentence. By the way, if you want to record good edits, you need something hot to drink. <laughs> At least I do. It helps to minimize mouth noise for me. Okay, so let's go and let's find that part of the script. I think it's here. Ships from the yeah. Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive electric cars, and will make data centers more efficient. I'm going to highlight the Beyond there. that, the new facility will be among... Okay, so there's a couple of things. Ideally, you're using the same setup, you're in the same space, the same microphone, and the same settings as before. If for some reason, let's say you're on the road, it's a, you know, it's a mobile situation, there are software programs that will EQ match, equalization match. In other words, it will take a, you know, reference audio like this audio and take new audio and it will EQ it to match that. It doesn't necessarily mean it will sound 100% like it, but EQ match does a pretty darn good job of getting it very close. There's some things that EQ match can't compensate for uh, or, fun, you know, exactly for instance, if you're in a different studio and a different mic, there's some things that you know, there might be some slight differences, but it will get you in the, it will get you very close. But this is scenario as I'm in my studio, I'm in a controlled environment. This is where I record. This is where I'm going to record my pickups. Okay, so 
same microphone, same settings. We've got all of that. So what I need to focus on are things like pacing, energy, tone. Am I reading it with higher energy? Is my voice up here? Am I reading it perhaps a little lower energy, a little slower, a little softer, maybe a little more relaxed? So I've got to find the tone, the pace, the attitude, the emotion, and I need to match that. Okay? And the way that I do that is by reading along with the script. Because when I read along with it, if I hear it in my headphones as I'm actually talking, I can hear my voice begin to line up. I can find the pace. I can find, you know, the inflections, the tone, the energy level, the attitude. And then, and then I can hear it. I can feel it when, I, when I'm right on, when I'm dead on. It's, it's like, for those of you who know a little bit about audio, if you've heard of audio phasing, it's like if you take like two identical waveforms and put them over top of each other, two pieces of audio, you can get this, it's, it's a phasing effect. And, and it almost sounds like that when you are in sync with the audio and you're reading it exactly the same way. It's almost, it's, it's, if you've never done it before, it's hard to explain, but for those of you who have heard audio phasing, it's almost that kind of a feel or a sound, but you can tell when you're really close, you can hear it. But when you read along to it, you can make those adjustments in speed, pace, tempo, attitude, energy, all of those things. So let's go back to the beginning and it may take a few moments, but we'll get there. So let's, uh, I'm going to play the audio and I'm going to read along. The fight against global warming is one of the most important challenges facing humanity. We need to step up our efforts in order to preserve the future of our planet. We, we not only need to generate, transmit, and store green electrical energy efficiently, we need smart solutions that reduce power consumption even further. That's why, that's why Infineon is now investing 5 billion euros in a new smart power fab in Dresden. Here it is. The new, the new fab, fab will support the twin, twin transition of decarbonization and digitalization and help tackle the most pressing challenges of our time by enabling the green energy transition. And here's our eye line. Chips from the, the Smart Power, Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive electric cars, and will make data centers more efficient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record right in the middle of this, and I'm going to record over the same file. Chips from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive gas power cars, and will make data centers more efficient. All I need is that last phrase, last second half. Will drive gas power cars, and will make data... So I'm going to select it, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to undo the recording. I'm going to find the part that I need to edit, and will improve... It. The new facility will be among the world's most resource-efficient power wafer fabs and will improve Infineon's positive climate. Where am I at here? Chips from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation, will drive electric cars. Okay, there's the phrase. I'm going to paste it over that. Okay, as you can see, the level's a little bit lower, so I'm going to bump it up just a little bit. Let's just listen to it now. Chips from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive gas power cars, and will make data centers more efficient. Okay, it sounds pretty good. It just sounds like the, the volume, the level's a little bit lower. So it's not so much what you see, it's what you hear. Go by what you hear. It looks right, but it doesn't sound quite right. Let's increase that volume. It's from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive gas power cars, and will make data centers more efficient. That's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's close. So what I'm going to do... I think I need to be closer to the microphone. I think that's part of why it sounds louder on this part. Chips from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will, will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will, will drive, drive electric cars, cars and, and will make data centers, centers more efficient. efficient. Now it's recording. Will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive gas-powered cars, and will make data centers more efficient. Will drive gas-powered cars, I'm going to select the part I want. I'm going to copy it and then undo that recording. We'll drive electric cars. There's the part we want to change, and I'm going to paste over top of it. Now listen. From the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy. We'll drive gas-powered cars, and we'll make data centers. 
to increase the level just a little bit. It's from the Smart Power Fab in Dresden will improve the generation and use of renewable energy, will drive gas-powered cars, and will make data centers more efficient. Now I can, I can, I would use that. I think it's pretty darn close. But I could, you know, my morning voice sounds a little, maybe a little more nasally. Um, I, but again, I've done so many thousands of these that I'm highly attuned to it. You may be too. You may hear that difference, but the average person is not going to be able to tell the difference there. So um, again, now it's first thing in the morning. I record this 30 minutes from now. I think I can, I can dial in that last two or 3% to make it exactly what I need it to be. But that's essentially how I record the pickup. So I read along to the script until I can, I can, I can tell that I've got the same pace, the same proximity to the mic, the same energy level, uh, the same attitude. And then uh, to make it easy, I, there's no need to open up a new file. I just record over the old one. I copy it and then I undo it. You know, it's back to normal. And then I can just go paste it over what I want. I used to have this whole process where I go and then I'd open up a new file. And then I'd record the pickup over here. And then I grab the pickup here, copy it. And then I would go back over here. But then I realized, what the heck? I mean, I don't need to do that. It's not permanent. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing, uh, it's not destructive editing where I, can, where I can't change it. I can, I can, I can record over top of anything I want right here. Look, that's, I'm recording all over my old recording. Okay. And then if I want that, all I have to do is, you know, select it and copy it. And if I undo that, it's undone as if I never did it. And then I can paste it wherever I want. So it just makes my workflow more, more efficient and faster. But that's uh, the down and dirty of how I record a voiceover pickup.